Mm. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It's Chris here. Welcome back to the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show. This is part 13. We've got another day of it's the last day of the group fixtures today. So we're going to be analyzing those. And we do have an announcement to make in a second. So make sure you hang around for a little bit. But for now, good morning, Ian. How are you doing? Uh, morning, Chrissy. I'm, I'm absolutely fine and dandy. Um, yeah, good. Um, We'll, we'll do the hellos and then I think we got a bit of drama last night to talk about. Yes, absolutely. Let's do the hellos then. Good morning, Barry. Um, tuning in from uh, Down Under, of course. CG is tuning in uh, from Loughborough. Not too far from me, CG. As I said yesterday, good to see you. Roger tuning in. How are you doing? Snips tuning in. How's it going? So Chris is down in Dorset. Even, even cold down in Dorset. Uh, Paul also tuning in from Down Under. Yeah, so were you following the cricket? Uh, Paul, I, I followed, uh, I saw the England game yesterday. Absolutely crazy what happened in the test match yesterday. Uh, Dean tuning in from Potter's Bar. How's it going? Uh, David tuning in from up north. How's it going? Uh, Michael tuning in. How are you doing? Anish, Stuart, Pedro, Ian up in Manchester, and Nick in uh, Nuneaton. So, guys, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back to the World Cup Daily uh, Spreadsheet Show. So, should we do our announcement first, Ian, before we you get into You do your announcement. You do, you do okay, your announcement. Okay, guys. I'm, I'm okay, too guys. emotional. Yeah. So straight up, guys, we have an announcement to make. I'll just get straight to the point. Today's show is going to be the last show. It's going to be the last show for the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show. We'll explain how we've come to this decision, how I've come to this decision, discussed this morning with Ian. Um, but it will be the last one today, guys. And um, firstly, just to say thank you so much for following. Um, the amount of views we've got, the amount of support we've got has way exceeded uh, what we thought was going to happen. Uh, we've been absolutely delighted. You know, we've had about 50 people watching every day. The whole series has had over 10,000 views now. And the first video has got over two and a half thousand views. So absolutely fantastic stuff. In the YouTube back end, we also see the average watch time. And the average watch time on these videos is about 20 minutes, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. So we've been completely bowled over by, by the response. But at the same time, we're, we've had this problem creeping up on us uh, in the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet show. And as we move into the knockout stages, the main problem we're ha having is the data set we're dealing with is getting smaller and smaller. You know, once we get into the last 16, it gets a lot smaller. And then quarterfinals and semifinals, it gets so small that we can't really provide credible analysis, you know, for that smaller data set. We've just been discussing it with Ian this morning. Um, and we are aware, you know, we've got our disclaimers. We're not encouraging anybody to bet, but, you know, we're not silly. I don't think, you know, we understand a lot of people in some way, shape or form, this will be guiding what they're doing with their money, you know, and that's and that's a very serious thing for us. So we don't want to put out any analysis that isn't, in our view, credible. And if you get down to a small data set, um, it's just not really credible, the analysis. I think for the group stages, we've had enough data to do some credible analysis. So guys, we've come to the decision. We're going to go out on a high. It's been amazing. And I think uh, it's been amazing watching Ian uh, do his thing for me. And I think the Excel stuff, there's certainly some bits and bobs that can be useful for you. But we have decided to go out on a high today, guys. So Ian, very welcome to add any comments to that. No, I'm, I'm emotional. I've, I've been sacked. I've been sacked. I've never, I've never been sacked. Um, no, I mean, it is a valid point. Once we lose these these games where we are looking even now when we're breaking it down by bands, you've got small samples. You know, I'm looking at the the um, uruguay Ghana game today and you've only got 24 games there that in that band. Once you start to get down to the next level, it... Um, and we've got a small number. It's as simple as that. There is a small number of games, and 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 people would say, "Well, go back more World Cups." You know, we'd be talking about data back in the eighties, then when half these people probably weren't even born. So it just comes. So no, I, it, what you've done, Chris, for me watching you has been brilliant, and I do think it's a really valid point. And and I am aware that people want to um, place money on stuff, and you can't just sit. You end up just being opinionated. It just is. Well, on opinion, mm -hmm. I you know, and yeah. I've done that a bit more in these third round games. You know, games like this two today that don't really mean anything for two of the teams, Portugal and Brazil through. Um, so it become it does become harder, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, yeah, and as I said, yeah, we've we've gen- I've enjoyed uh, delivering these. I think Ian has as well. But it's it's a bit of work oh, in the background. You know, it's yeah. it's probably yeah, t- it's two or three hours work a day, and we could just see it see it kind of you know fizzling out uh as as the analysis gets more and more difficult to do so we decided we think we think it's been great and we're, we're going to go out on a high um good right should we cover should we cover um last night let's do it yeah right. uh, yep. what i will say because i've had a couple of people ask me privately for my file that i've been keeping i will after today's games, I will post that on the FTS website. I'll drop it for you, Chris, if you want to post it somewhere on yours. Uh, yep. And I will keep that up to date for the FTS guys, and you can download the file. I'll still fill in the results, and you can download the file, and I'll still be doing the FTS podcast, where, in effect, I repeat the advice there. So if I did fancy a bet in the knockout stages, I will put it on there. Um, but, I, you know, for an Excel purpose, we are running out of data that we can use. Um, I mean, last night... I, I was working. I was actually sat here working. I had my uh, phone on Football 24. I was talking to a Scotsman. It's absolutely great because you can get a Scotsman now, anything. If you need builders or roofers and things, go and find a Scotsman. <laughs> They're not doing anything. So I was talking to a Scotsman, but the phone was pinging and, and the scenes when Costa Rica were 2-1 up and Japan were 2-1 up and you're looking at them both going out. I mean, I'm sitting there talking to this guy on Excel. Going, this is unbelievable. This is genuinely, in football terms, that was unbelievable. Um, obviously, Germany turned it round. Spain didn't. And the Germans went home um, for mm. the second World Cup running, which is, you know, it's staggering given their history in the tournament. What I will say, there's been loads of aggro and I've only seen Twitter pictures on whether the ball was out or in for the mm. Japan second goal. Um, and lots of people showing, I mean, people getting Sabutio pitches out and doing mimicking it and this, that and the other. Yeah. What I will say, from my understanding, and the guys who watched it, feel free to correct me, from my understanding, the goal was given. Uh, and then Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, so goal was given. So it was not like they flagged for the ball to go out. So the goal was given. There's absolutely no reason then for that goal not to stand. Uh and people say, well, if it was out, we don't check every single time the ball goes out of play. We've never, we VAR has never done that. It doesn't check whether the ball goes out for a throw in. It doesn't check, you know, what about when a um, attacker puts it out for a corner and it should be a goal kick and the court and they score from the resulting corner. So I think there's far too much drama around it. I think from the yeah. English, we do want the Germans to go out. So we're trying to justify it. But it certainly looked to me like from first glance, the ball was out. But nothing was given, so it's a perfectly good goal on my basis. I think we, I think, I think with VAR, there's a big instance of people. I know they've made, and I think in this tournament they got some wrong. Russia, I thought they were superb. We seem to make a mess of it, but people are so anti it, they just want to bash it all the time. Mm. I think um, just I just want to make two points on football. Well, it's our last one, so I can you know go, go a bit freestyle today. But just two points on technical points on football with the ball going out. I remember when I was like six years old or something. I, I I had a book about football, like just and just just about the game and stuff. And I remember this diagram. It said the way to judge if the ball is out is the bird. It has to be the bird's eye view. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be the view from above, and then all of the ball has to be over the line. So it's not. It's physically all the ball over the line. Well, because of the curvature of the ball, if you look from above, that's yeah. that's that's yeah. a different question. Mm. Um, and we didn't have. I think the problem last night was, uh, or what the pundits were saying, was uh, FIFA didn't release the footage that they used to yeah. actually make that decision. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think that's where they get it wrong. But then they've got to do it every time. The, for me, they'd have to do that every time the ball's dubiously gone out or hasn't gone out. What about when a mm. winger, Gareth Bale's running down the wing at 80 mile an hour and goes out of play and crosses it in and scores? Um, you know, you, you'd start winding it back if we go down there. I think you've got to go with the on-field decision in that case. Um, and they didn't say it was out of play. They let play go on and the goal went in. Uh, so mm. I, I'd be interested if it had been the other way around, if they'd ruled it out, would they then have said, actually, yeah. that ball was in? That's That would have interested me more um, mm. if they'd ruled the goal out, but then they'd had a look and said it was in, because in effect, then they are re-refereeing the game. Um, mm. And that would have been a completely different story for me. Mm. Um, but there we go. But amazing. And Belgium, you know, I, I thought Belgium would do okay in this tournament. I oh, am yeah. 
I will. Yes, and I said it. If you go back on my podcast over the years, Martinez is an absolute fraud, and I think he got found out. <laughs> Um, he's another Pochettino for me. They're both frauds. Um, and Croatia, as I said, now they're through. Croatia will be a team that are wildly tough to beat. Morocco, fantastic mm. for them to go through. Um, Japan, brilliant. I mean, you love seeing the Japanese fans, I'm sure, getting all excited. And bye-bye Germans. Arriva Dirci. No, Alvida Zayn. Sorry. I've got to get mm. the language right, haven't I? Alvida Zayn. There we go. No, no. So we oh, it on. was unbelievable watching it. Watching it live. Oh, it was, sure. it was yeah, just I mean, incredible. That must have been the most exciting evening there's been so far, watching it with that going on last night. I mean, the the, the I was getting excited just watching Football 24 at the thought of them both going out because that mm. just would have been, from them both to be one up to be a position of going out in football terms was absolutely staggering. Mm. Um, mm. So kind of disappointing that the Germans turned it round. Mm. Uh, and then there's obviously the conspiracy theory. Did Spain lose on purpose? Yeah, there's yeah, that conspiracy theory out there. But um, yeah. is, is there? It did Spain deliberately lose, so they got an easier path, and the Germans out. Mm. Yeah. Um, anyway, on to today. So we have Portugal, Korea, uh, Uruguay, Ghana. Um, Portugal are through. Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon, Brazil. Brazil are through. So we now know fourteen of the last sixteen. We've got two spots to fill. Um, I guess the game of the day is Uruguay, Ghana. Um, is the one Uruguay bottom of the group, but if they four, win, four spots to fill, yeah, F yeah, but we got two, two are done. Portugal and Brazil are through. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, my bad. Only yeah. two. There's only two that we don't know. The two I will see. come yeah. from. So one will be out of Ghana, Uruguay, um, and one will be out of Serbia, Switzerland. You would think um, Ghana, Uruguay. I think Uruguay are going to win today. Got the best player in the world. Have I told you, Rodrigo Bentinka. Yeah, um, I saw him. He did really well last time, yeah. If, if you whack my sheet up, Chris, if you can. Yep. As I say, I will make this available after today, guys, tomorrow morning. I'll You'll have to go to the FTS website, but I'll, I'll drop a copy for Chris. Um, and um, so we've got Portugal, South Korea. I've put the bands in. I mean, you can see the difference today. Now we've got Portugal miles ahead of South Korea, Uruguay miles ahead of Ghana and Brazil miles ahead of Cameroon. Um, I think that's the biggest variance we've seen today, Brazil 5-7-4. I think that's the biggest difference we've had in a game. But obviously, Brazil have already qualified, Portugal already qualified. So these become these become nothings because you don't know what team these are going to play. You saw with France losing to... Could you just zoom it in a bit, Ian? Oh, I can. You, you, saw with France, you saw with France losing to Tunisia that, you know, if they rest players, these big teams, then the little teams have a chance. Um, but Uruguay Ghana is the one for me. Uruguay Ghana, 1.95 Uruguay, um, 279 ahead. So we've got 251300 here. If I, I scroll across, Chris uses keyboard. So we've had 24 games there, 17 wins, 5 2. Uh, win odds that equates to 1.41. We could get Uruguay at 1.95. Now, this is the sort of game in what I do. If that was a league game and it said Tottenham Brentford, I would be. This is when we talk about betting. That would be what I call, and the lads who know me, that would be a fill your boots because the value we're getting. Come back now. It's a small data set. World Cup, lot on the line. Um, you do have to treat it more cautiously. I do think Uruguay are going to win today. Um, Ghana are are the lowest ranked team still, only by ten now after the last results, but they are the lowest ranked team in the competition. Uh, I think you're going to see a Uruguay of old. You're going to see a little bit of rolling around the floor and a little bit of um, play. But Ghana have got everything to play for because if Ghana can get a result, Ghana can go through to the next round. Um, uh, I can't see uh, South Korea beating Portugal, irrespective of the team. So it's a massive game for Ghana, but I do think Uruguay are just going to be good enough. Nothing at all in the goal markets, and the, that, the Uruguay and Ghana, those games fall in the same bracket. You can see there's nothing. Portugal I wouldn't touch because we don't know the team. There is value in the Uruguay home win. I think they're going to be wily enough to get it done today. Uh, there is a golf in the two teams, um, but they, you know, they haven't won their first two. And then you get to Switzerland... Um, Brazil, I mean, if I put in, you get to, oh, I'm clicking on your screen, Chris, trying to change the numbers. I need, <laughs> yeah. to change, I need to change it over here. If we put 500 in here, we can go to 1,000. 
this is you can see how rare when we start talking about small data sets we've only had three games in the last uh, since world cup since 22 where we've had a team over 500 ahead in elo ratings they've actually lost one of them so i wouldn't touch that with a barge pole you see the price for first half goal 1.43 we've got it 1.5 so there's just nothing there that interests me whatsoever um switzerland serbia is a one to 50 game pop that in again absolutely nothing we're saying we're getting small value on switzerland 2.82 as opposed to 2.29 as i've said the last two games the manager says that this is the best swiss side that he's ever they've ever had you know they held out against brazil for 80 minutes serbia probably haven't been the team that people said they were going to be um you know, a few few good pundits really fancied Serbia's chances in this um, <clears throat> tournament. Um, I haven't seen enough of them to comment on that, but uh, they only drew with Cameroon. They lost to Brazil. Um, I think the Swiss are going to get a win there. I think the Swiss are going to do a job and nick it. It'll be tight, 1-0, something like that. So the only game I would have anything on a punting-wise, and it's exactly what we're talking about, Chris, you get into struggling to find stuff. The only thing would be I do fancy Uruguay to win today, on, uh, and there's a bit of value in their price. Mm -hmm. Right, excel us up, baby. Very good, very good. So, yeah. Any questions for Ian? So the, probably Ian's last analysis on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet show. So if you've got any questions, you know about Ian's analysis there. Or if you've got any questions, you know, generally about um, Ian's approach to, to what he's doing. Uh, now's the time, guys. Now's the time to get those questions in the chat. And as, um, as um, Ian said, um, the download file will be available. So uh, the file that Ian's used... Um, he said he'll he'll share it with me. I will put it online. So uh, where where you usually get the data file from, uh, you can just click in the in the video description below, of course, and um, uh, you'll also get a promo promo email about our XL VBA Football Traders community. But eventually, it will be available at that link. Uh, we'll make this file available. So, a question from uh, Ian Moran. Uh, Ian Erskine. I know how important it is when betting to get value odds, but when trading, is this crucial? Uh, absolutely. The, it, irrespective of what you're doing, if we if we if we take all that away from prices, in fact, and turn it back into percentages, that's all we're dealing in. All we're dealing in is percentages, and we want we want something to happen a greater percentage of the time than the market thinks it will happen. And it doesn't matter at what stage you do that. If you go the other way around and you're betting where something doesn't as, happen as often, and the market's got it priced the other way, then over time you'll get you'll get winners but over time your bankroll will just recede your bankroll will always recede whatever way you do it so when i trade football i want value pre-kickoff before before a ball is kicked i want to say i've got value on this game having goals and then i decide what markets i want to enter and how i'm going to trade those goals um but you cannot you it is impossible to win the other way around it's the easiest and we always come down to the coin toss if somebody said to me, we'll toss a coin. If you win, I'll give you 60p. If you lose, you've only got to give me 40p. You would stand there all day long. You may, you may call heads and it's 20 tails on the trot. I'm just going to stand there all day long and have that bet and keep going. If it's the other way around where I'm only going to win 40p and I'm going to lose 60p, I don't have the first one ever. And, it, and, and that's in. It. it doesn't matter how you're entering a market. If you haven't got those percentages flip everything in percentages and i think that's one of the things that i try and get across to people and we're, we're looking at that now that you've got to understand the percentages when i say like the late goals when we when we did chris done that table and we've got 40 percent, you are going to lose 60 percent of the time you're probably going to lose if you're winning you're going to lose 55 percent of the time still but you can still make money in that 45 50 percent that you win um and do I look to back late goals? Yes, I do in certain games here. I do. I'll, I'll quite often, if I've if I've got good numbers behind what I'm doing and I've gone in the one half mark and the goal hasn't come, I will quite often enter at 85 minutes onwards where I can scratch my position if I get a late goal. Would you take value, or value over two odds, Ian, and by how much over two? Would you take value over two odds, Ian, and how much over two? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand and relate to that. I try when I when I do my pricing. So we're, if let's say this was my model here, and I've got let's put the I'll go back put the Uruguay game back in here, which is what was it two fifty two five one for three hundred. 
Mm -hmm. oh, I've got one four one. So I've got one four one there. I would look that. So that's that's basically what's happened. That's the precise odds of exactly what has happened. There's been twenty four games. That's what it equates to. I would look for me to have ten percent of that. Um, above that. So I would be looking, I'd want something round about 1.55 and above. Yeah. So I'd be adding one point, you know, point one four on there. Um if you if if it is what Brendan says, do I bet above two? I do, but most of my betting and trading is done around odds between sort of 1.8 and 2.5. And that's more of a mental thing. It's it's the bigger prices you bet at, the bigger lower the percentages are the longer variance you have and again people don't understand variance you know i've got formula excel formula that chris does that give me longest losing runs and longest streaks so you can see if you better even money you can expect to have a losing run of about eight bits so just imagine saying a coin cost a coin toss and we're doing it and we do it and do it and you lose eight by the time you've lost five or six, you're probably getting fed up and you think, I can't be doing that anymore. Sports betting is exactly the same. People would bet Tottenham 2.0, 2.0, 2, don't win, don't win. But, oh, it's rubbish. I'm not doing that. You've got to understand those numbers. Once you start betting at odds above that, that grows hugely. And you can have longest losing runs of 20, 25. And you've got to be mentally prepared for that. I tend to operate around the smaller numbers um, because it suits me better. I, I, that's my mindset. I like to operate around about even money. Mm. Just on the losing runs idea, there's a video. Um, I always seem to be talking about Darren Brown. I don't. I sound like I'm obsessed with the guy, but you know who Darren Brown is, don't, don't you? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. There's a video of him online. It was on Channel Four once on one of his shows, and he's just tossing a coin, and um, it, he gets ten heads in a row. Um, and then later in the in the program, he explains how he did it. So obviously, everyone's saying, "Oh, you just edited it in that way." But what he actually did was he spent uh, nine hours, nine hours toss, tossing the coin. And they and they showed it to you with various camera angles and stuff, you know, to prove that it wasn't edited. Um, so if if you do it for long enough, yeah. you're going to get you're going to get that long run eventually. Aren't you? Exactly. It, took, that, it took him nine hours, he said, to toss yeah. it, to and, get and 10 that, consecutive and heads. It, the more, you know, and it's not this isn't this show wasn't done to plug FTS, but I've done a summer school. I've done some podcasts on the website that I've done a series, which I'm doing now, and I've, I've, it's kind of slowed a little bit during World Cup, and I've got a couple of bits on at home, but I do every Thursday, so if you go back, and I talk about all this sort of stuff, that is that for me is why people lose at betting. This is this is the easy part, the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, This is getting Chris's stuff in place to give me this info quickly. It's then how you apply that and do it, and most people fail at that stage. Um, you've, you've got to be able to get this, but then you've got to be able to apply yourself. Okay, good. Maybe finally, then from Snips says, um, "How often do you trade the unders?" I'm yeah, I've got funny. some. I've got plenty of unders. You're winning before you start, yeah. Snips. I mean, again, yeah. it's a, again, it's a um, people want goals, don't they? So when when I get asked for stuff like this, people want what is going to happen. I totally agree with you. When the game kicks off at nil nil, under two and a half, you need three goals to lose. So it's great. Um, you know, I do it. I've got plenty of stuff that I do on unders. Um, and I quite enjoy it, but people want people watch football to see goals, and most people bet football for goals. But again, it's a contrarian view. Take the contrarian view; you can find great mm. value. I'm always attracted to nil-nil correct score because you can guarantee at some point in the game it's going to be nil-nil. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, if you have a proven winning system, would you back every game, even if? Even if some didn't have value, I assume value would be part of the system, right? Yes, yeah, so it'd be yeah. built into the system. That system mm. over time has proven has proven to be valuable in a whole. And again, that's where people literally individual bets, as in in a whole, betting that method provides me with value. And and again, we've got stuff that I can prove that over. 500 bets, 1,000 bets, that that system. I mean, Chris we talked about inserting text boxes on my sheets when he yeah, put com the comment. Uh, sell, sell comments, yeah. Yeah, sell comments. So when I run it, they actually tell me now how much it's worth per bet. So it would say you've had whatever 500 <laughs> bets, I'm winning 0 0.01 per bet or 0 0.1 per bet or 0 0.2 per bet. So that's the difference between building a system with a good set of data and then you do, yeah, I'm um, fixed odd stuff. I place every single bet that it throws up. Tradings, when you pick and, you know, we talked, somebody asked the other day what's betting and trading. We enter, we choose when to enter.
<laughs> right, Excel. Nice. Okay, right, let's get moving. So thanks so much for the questions, guys. Um, and we're going to move on to the Excel stuff. Yeah, so today we're going to try going to try to bring it all together today. So nothing new in terms of the technical stuff, but um, we've covered a lot of ground. You know, I'm just looking now. We've got pivot tables in there, got our data analysis formulae. We looked at dynamic ranges, um, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to try to go through it and hopefully add some clarity for you so you know what you need to do to get the analysis you want. Um, you know what you need and you can have a sense of which video you need to go to. Remember, every file that we've created is available. If you follow the link, link in the video description below, uh, you'll see the files stacked up there. So it's World Cup data after show one, two, three, four, five. Um, and that will allow you to get to, you know, a specific file that you want to get to. But generally, uh, everything we've done, I think, is in is in the final file. You know, I've always built on the same file rather than starting a new file. So today, um, yeah, let's do a bit of a summary. And then hopefully you can understand, you know, what approach might uh, might work for you. So let's start with the pivot table then. Um, let's just put pivot table in here. So, yeah, let me know in the chat, guys, what was your impressions of pivot table analysis, you know, and what do you think the pros and the cons are? Um, you got to remember, yeah, I mean, everyone's got their bias, haven't they? And I, I think I have a bias against pivot tables just because of the way, you know, I've done my Excel learning. I've had great results using other techniques, including VBA, which we'll talk about today, but we haven't covered at all um, in this uh, in this series. Uh, but a pivot table, you know, the pros for me is it's, it's almost automated. So, so it's very fast um, to get the analysis you need. Okay, here we go. I've put automated in uh, inverted commas there. Let's um, widen this column a bit. Alt H W here. Um, yeah, kind of. It's this semi-automated idea. You know, um, when we're using our data analysis formulae, um, and we've used these many times. Uh, for example, to get to get this table, we've used our data analysis formulae. Yeah, it took a while to put those formulae together. Whereas with a pivot table. We can just select the data, and as long as we know what we're doing, you know, and that is a difficult thing, but as long as we know what we're doing and we've got the right data structure, um, then it's quite fast. It's quite fast to develop a uh, pivot table. Um, so that would be that that would be a pro for me. You know, it, it, it can get the job done quickly as long as you've got the right data structure and as long as uh, you know how to manipulate it. Now, the main con for me with a pivot table is um, the interface is difficult uh, to get to know and to manipulate here. So what do we mean by the interface? Well, if you're doing anything with a pivot table, you can go back to, I think it's one of the early shows where we actually put a pivot table together. Um, you're going to have to manipulate this interface. I don't even know where it is. It's terrible, isn't it? Um, let's go ahead and it's called the the field uh, show field list here. Yeah, it's called the field list. So to get anything out of pivot tables, you're going to have to uh, go ahead and interact with this, um, which can be intimidating. And it took me literally years uh, to really familiarize, familiarize myself with this and to build up a degree of confidence. My tip um, for working with this is to be very clear. Uh, which columns do we need in this analysis? And we've spoken many times on the show uh, about the importance of data structure. Data structure. If you don't have the right columns um, in your spreadsheet, we've been talking about this this week with Ian with FPS stuff. If you don't have the right columns, the analysis is going to be much more complicated. You know, even for someone like me with a lot of experience, it's going to make a big difference in terms of how difficult it is to put together. So, um, it's easier to go back to the data set and to ensure you've got the right data structure. So we've done this several times on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show, gone in um, and added some columns there because that makes the analysis here. We've got the stronger team column we added at one point. We've got this text string. This allowed us to analyze the bands, for example. And when we're doing that, just a kind of design point, um, make sure you understand that you've got formulae here. Um, so we've just used a different... Um, shading here, cell shading to make us to, to underline the fact that we actually have a uh, formula here. Um, 
So the interface is difficult to get to, to get to know and manipulate. So you're going to have to invest some time in get in getting to know it. Uh, Arnie, with a question here, Chris, can you take a look at an earlier query at the top of the chats? If you cover this, I apologize as I'm watching on delay. Thank you both for a great show. Um, just going through the chat towards the top, Arnie. If you could just copy it in again. Um, yeah, I can't see anything else from you, Arnie, in the chat. So if you just copy it in, Arnie, if you copy it in now, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll be able to uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer it. Mm. Okay, let me know in the chat, guys. Have you been impressed by pivot tables? Um, and you know, would are, are you going to be using them? Uh, something else with pivot tables uh, that we didn't mention. A little more column height here. Uh, F4, repeat last action. Something else is allows for slices. Hmm. And we didn't cover here. We didn't cover this, but it's important to mention it. So uh, great for dashboard building. Oh, old, old Scotty Z tips if he's in, he loves a slicer, that boy. Yeah. So a slicer, it's, it's this nice visual thing. So uh, uh, I just want to see if I, I can put one in. I tend not to be great at this kind of thing. But if you go to insert slicer, um, and then, yeah, you can choose what um, column header. So, again, being clear about the data structure, which columns do we need? Absolutely important. But we can go knockout or group, for example. That's our filter at the top of this pivot table. What we'll get is we get this nice visual. You see that overlay in? It's just yeah. Excel's automatically generated that. Um, so now, nice visual interactive. You can just click there, and you can see your analysis is going to update like that. It's pretty cool, yeah. isn't it? And yeah, uh, yeah you not. could go ahead. Got some slicer settings there at the top. But you could go ahead and choose, you know, whatever's important to you. You know, knockout and group was important to us in our analysis. Uh, you could put uh, teams in there, continents. We didn't, we didn't get onto that. Um, anything that you're interested in. And I've been able to produce really nice dashboards uh, using these slicers. But I would say, let's go ahead and put another con in here. Um, so the layout is difficult to predict. It predicts how much space does the pivot table use. And this is probably the number one, number one reason I don't do a lot with pivot tables. I, I, well, just when we manipulate the slicer here, we can see the pivot table changing size. Uh, how big is it going to get? Are we going to get? Are we going to lose columns and rows? You can see, see there, we're losing a column. Um, yeah, so that can be difficult in terms of controlling a dashboard, how it looks. Um, that's something you're going to have to look out for, and it maybe you have to sacrifice uh, some of the aesthetic quality. So the dashboard is not going to look as good. It's not going to feel as slick, but you do get you do get all the pros, of course, of pivot tables. So, just some ideas uh, for you there about pivot tables. That's Probably the approach I would recommend, you know, overall to somebody getting started with um, analysis, uh, football data analysis, what's the one thing I should learn? It probably is pivot tables. In some way, it pains, in some ways, it pains me to say it, but a good practical solution uh, for getting the analysis you need, probably pivot tables. Okay. Let's look at some other approaches here. So, data analysis formulae, uh, e.g., so things like uh, count ifs here. Hmm. And this was your chosen approach, of course, Ian. So your your uh, dashboard runs through count ifs and things like that. Um, so what's Brendan saying here? Brendan is saying uh, a con for pivot tables is VLOOKUPs and trying to copy formulas outside of the table. Yes, I've had problems with this, absolutely. So we want some more analysis here. In fact, in the show, I remember feeling this exactly, Brendan. So we've got our percentages but we don't want percentages, do we? We want implied odds. So we want to uh, do one divided by one divided by the value in these cells. So you could do that by having a uh, formula over here. Go ahead and do this quickly. You know, something like that. But then you get, you know, and this this kind of pops up in the formula, which can, can be a bit annoying. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had problems with that. I've had problems... With that, Brendan, it's something I tried to do through my career a few times, like build formulae on the size of pivot tables. And, and as I said, because the uh, layout is unpredictable, you know, can be difficult. So my chosen approach, you know, what I usually use is uh, the data analysis formulae. Now, 
Uh, for me, it gives us complete control. Uh, for example, over the layout. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's go ahead, uh, go to our dashboard. So when we're building these data analysis formulae, we can decide how many rows we have. Yeah, uh, we can, uh, and we can plan that and we can build a nice dashboard around it. We can decide how many rows and how many columns that's compared to the pivot table. Well, the pivot, uh, the pivot table is deciding. In fact, I just got an error because the pivot table was gonna override that formula. Uh, the pivot table is deciding what the layout is that drives me mad when I'm trying to create dashboards, you know, for people like Ian and other people. So that's why I prefer the data analysis formula. It means the layout is predictable. Every time we come back to that sheet, uh, we know exactly uh, what's it, what it's going to look like. So this is why it tends to be my chosen solution. Uh, cons, okay, a long time to put together. Uh, you need strong formula building skills. Hmm. Okay, so absolutely. Let's go have let's go ahead and have a look at some of these formulae. You know, even this count ifs formula, these formulae get quite long quite quickly. Uh, so count ifs, sum ifs, we've also got average ifs. Uh, we've got this idea of a range and then a criteria. So a range and then which which entries do we want to pick out from that range? And we can have any other number of criteria. And I've got up to I think five or six criteria using count ifs. Uh, and things like count ifs, those data analysis formulae. Yeah, the problem is going to be that formula is going to get long. So your uh, formula building skills have to be good. How could you mitigate that? Well, it's all the stuff we've done on the show, guys. When I've been building the formulae, checking as we go along, taking your time, uh, using the prompts that Excel gives us. We've had some other good selections, like you can, uh, ideas rather. So you can use, if you click on this FX button, it gives you a dialog box to work through, could be incredibly useful. Um, really looking out for things like the rows as well. So if you want these data analysis formally to work, you've got to make sure these rows are lining up perfectly. So six to three, two, five here, uh, for example. Hmm. So your formula building skills have got to be good. Another con for um, working with the data analysis formally is um, dynamic approach uh, to data management required. Hmm. So we did cover this on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet show, I think around row around show 9, 10, 11, around that. When we're using a pivot table, it's quite easy to point a pivot table to a table, if that makes sense. When we create a pivot table, just uh, do this quickly to show you what I'm talking about, tables and pivot tables. Uh, Excel's going to ask, what data do you want to look at? You can just put the name of a table in there if you're using tables. And we won't get too far into this discussion now. Uh, but if you're using tables, it's quite easy to point a pivot table to a table. That's going to give you your dynamic control. So when you put more data into the spreadsheet, that table should automatically update uh, with the additional data. Or it's a fairly simple adjustment to pull down the table. So, yeah, pivot table. Uh, yeah, it's easier if we're adding rows, it's easier to have that ongoing approach that's going to work in you know, an ongoing and, and sustainable way. More difficult, guys, more difficult with formulae. Now, if you're using formulae, you've got to select those critical columns. So we've spoken about data structure many times, those column headers, which columns are actually important in your analysis. You might have two, one or two, you might have five or six. More than that, it's going to get quite difficult. Um, then for each of those columns, you need what we call some kind of dynamic approach um, to defining that column. We covered this on the um, World Cup Daily Spreadsheet show, an approach to defining the range that the, column that the column covers. Once again, won't go deep into this now. But you might end up with, you know, five or six dynamic reference definitions. You can then use that uh, with your data analysis formulae. That should get the job done. It, sh it should get the job done, but that can be a little bit you know, technical, well, it certainly is technical, you know, can be discouraging, but we do cover it step by step uh, on the World Cup Daily Show. And yeah, that approach is using indirect for that dynamic data management. We can't have too many uh, indirect formulae as well. Um, yeah, Brendan says on pivot tables, I think, yeah, very, pow very powerful, but I have to copy paste the values to properly use the data. I've done this in the past, definitely, Brendan. So, you know, you've got your pivot table, Okay, I've got my analysis. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you can 
you could just convert these to values, copy paste the values, and then do some kind of manipulation, whatever you want to do. But of course, that means you don't get the dynamic quality of the pivot table. You know, your slices aren't going to work, for example, uh, on those uh, copied values, clearly. Good. So, um, yeah, just some thoughts there uh, on, you know, what you need to do to get to get the analysis you need. Pivot table data analysis formulae, something we haven't covered is DSUM as well. We love DSUM on Excel VBA for, for football traders. Uh, DSUM is a nice substitute where you're not looking for this tabulated analysis. So I'd call this a tabulated analysis. We want to see all of the teams stacked up. Uh, if you don't want to see all the teams, you just want to see a single team, a bit like what Ian's doing in his dashboard, just want to select a single team, then DSUM. DSUM is a great option. And probably if I was building Ian's dashboard, I, I, I would have looked at DSUM. Gets the power of the data analysis form, formula without the really long formula. A DSUM formula is just a, a really short formula, requires a little bit of uh, requires a little bit of setup around it. So I'll just talk about one more thing, but let me get into the uh, comments quickly, pick up anything here. Um, so Arnie says, input row 74, Ivory Coast rating shows IC high by 41 points, also shows Argentina as team A, but one three nil. Makes a difference to dash stats E22, which should be 11, not 10. Okay, we will check that. Uh, we've got that comment in the chat so we can see it below the YouTube video. Uh, so, Ian, I think there's possibly a problem with the data, but we'll, we'll have to go and check that. Uh, so thanks for pointing that out, Arnie. We'll check I'll, that. I'll have a look at that, Arnie, and fix it if that's the case. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and Jimmy says, welcome, Jimmy, by the way. Use the get pivot formula. Make a pivot. Then in your new place, you can define your table view by using the get pivot formulas. Nice. Okay, yeah. I don't know much about the get, the get pivot formula. Um, I don't know anything about it, to be honest. So... That seems like a good way to work uh, with pivot tables. So if you're into pivot tables, you can see their potential, then definitely have a look at that uh, that formula. Very good. Okay, so finally, um, uh, people have you know always asked me questions about VBA, and we haven't uh, touched on VBA at all. Um, that's because we've been doing data analysis and. Yeah, you can see Excel is just a rich topic. In order to understand what techniques to use, you've got to understand what you're trying to do. And let's just talk about two typical things. There's four things people do are doing in Excel. We won't talk about all four. Let's just talk about two. Um, one is data analysis, which is exactly what we've been doing in, on this show, looking at a data set and then trying to get some insights. That's exactly what we've, we've been doing. Uh, so we've got data analysis for data analysis. These are the approaches that I recommend. If all you need is data analysis, you don't need VBA. Yes, it would be possible to get these insights with VBA, but VBA is important for one specific application of Excel, which is what I call automation. Automation. So where you're doing some kind of manual process, you're copying data around. Um, a good example is, yeah, if you're doing your football analysis, you'll want to copy fixtures into your file. That's a manual process. It's an error-prone process. It's a process that's going to get on your nerves after a while if you're doing it all the time. Uh, so that's where VBA helps. VBA just, helps automate just, that process. Yeah, go on. Just a note on Arnie's query. Uh, Arnie, yeah. I think you might be looking at the points one. They didn't win 3-0. They won 2-1. I think you're yeah. looking at the... We've got a column there for the points they get for the group games in AFAG, and Argentina got three points. Ivory Coast got no points. Um, so just check, just check that we've got the result in the sheet as two one, which it was two one. I've just checked. So I think you're looking at the points one in the group column as opposed to the match result. I, yeah, I think okay. our sheet. I think our sheet's fine. Okay. Good. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. So, yeah. Where does VBA fit in? It fits in if you're trying to automate some kind of um, some kind of manual process. Lots of uh, people who work with football data are doing that all the time. So hopefully that's a bit of a summary for you guys. And as always with Excel, the only person who you can safely ignore when it comes to people who are offering advice about Excel is the person who says there's only one way to do it. Yeah. That person you can safely ignore. Anybody with some experience will appreciate there's more than one way to do it. You've got to find the way uh, that works for you. My personal favorite is the data analysis formulae, but I've also got lots of respect for people who are very good with pivot tables. We've just felt today the power of slicer for, slices, for example. And where would VBA fit, fit into your practice? Uh, it's possible. 
it's possible you would want VBA if you're running some kind of process, what we call a process around your um, uh, football data analysis. Finally, guys, if you're like, I've loved these shows, I want more, you know where you've got to go, guys. You've got to go to our XL VBA for football uh, community. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's totally unique. It must be the only online community specifically for people working with football data in Excel. What do you get in the community? Well, I've got a file up on the screen now, which is our, our content navigator. So there's a lot of stuff on there. There's over 50 videos now, over 30 hours of content. So you're probably saying, Chris, that's a lot of stuff to look at. Where would I start? Great question. I'll be asking exactly the same thing. You should start with our content navigator file. So um, if you uh, join the community, you get an email telling you what to do. And this is the first thing we, we recommend you do. Download the content navigator file. You can see everything summarized here. So the videos are organized into video series. We have our foundational training. We cover data analysis formally there. We've got our member question series. So over the years, uh, we've been going over two and a half years now. Uh, over the years, uh, members have sent in questions. I've done specific videos to deal with member questions. We've got our heat map analysis series. So if you want to generate a heat map of odds brackets, you know, I want to bet in these odds brackets, what's the return over time? Uh, that's all there. I've got form analysis. So you want to generate, you know, what's the form in the last six games across this data set? We've got a series there and you can see how detailed these series are. You've got seven videos. That series is about four and a half hours. You get all the Excel down, download files too. We've got New Horizons. So there's a book called uh, Statistical Sports Modeling in Excel by a guy called Andrew Mack. Uh, in this series, we look at the models that he talks about. Are they any good? Can we put them together? Uh, that's all in the New Horizons series. Uh, automate your weekend process. So I was just talking about automation with VBA. If you're interested in the power of VBA, you're going to love Automate Your Weekend Process. I taught through the process of using VBA to automate all, all of that manual stuff. Fixture file, model, results. How should all that interact? How can VBA bring it together so it's all done at the click of a button? That's what we cover in Automate Your Weekend Process. Dutching for profit. If you're interested in dutching, we look at how to automate that in Excel. And we also have our VBA Quick Start series. So this is for people who never done any VBA, they're looking to get started. Excel VBA Quick Start, we go from absolute beginner level. The first video being, being, do you need VBA at all? Because if you don't need VBA, it's probably not worth learning. But the experience of learning a computer programming language, I would say, is uh, can be quite transformational. It's quite transformational for my career, definitely. So even if you're not using VBA, uh, just learning it will definitely have benefits. Yeah, and then for each video, you can see we've got a summary for each video. Uh, I send these out uh, in the emails when we uh, make one of these videos and you've got the main topics and techniques covered. So you could just hit control F here. Uh, you could search this file. If you want to search VLOOKUP, for example, you could just type it in and you'll be able to get to the exact videos uh, where that uh, topic or technique uh, is covered. So that's XL VBA Football Traders, guys. And we do have an offer, which will keep going for a couple more days. Uh, so the link is in the video description below. And if you use uh, World Cup, the World Cup discount code, uh, you'll lock in a discounted rate, not just for the World Cup, you'll lock that in for life. Very good. Okay, right. And anything else to cover, Ian? No, I'm I'm done. Um, thanks, yeah. everyone, for listening. I will say that, obviously, there's multiple skills involved when you apply to football betting. Chris, I met Chris in 2016. He is absolutely turned my betting life into betting and trading on steroids and <laughs> i can't you need excel and there is genuinely no one better fantastic guy fantastic work he does um become a good friend of mine that's obviously why we're sat here um but all this stuff is absolutely genuinely brilliant and and it goes hand in hand with what we do great fantastic yeah so just say a big thank you to everybody who's watched uh, we've loved doing these shows. I have lots of views, as I said. So thank you so much. There'll be lots more to come on Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. You can go and follow Ian, uh, FTS Income on, uh, on Twitter. And finally, just to say thank you to, to you, Ian. You have given up a lot of time. Um, Ian also totally took responsibility for that data set as well. He's manually fixed a lot of that data. 
So he's poured a massive amount of time in and it's been absolutely uh, fantastic to get your insights. Always good to work with you, Ian, yeah? Yeah, no, lovely, son. And I'll see you soon. And guys, I will pop the file up on FTS. I'll send Chris a link to it. I'll put it in the FTS World Cup Telegram room as well. And I'll keep it going throughout the tournament so you can use it, do whatever you want with it. Apply Chris's skills to it. There you go. Fantastic. Okay, guys. Hope okay. to see you next time. Yeah. Football traders. Take care. Yeah. We'll see bye, you soon. Bye-bye.